Hi, we're at the Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association Conference. I'm here with Dr. Keith Bible. Dr. Bible, thank you so much for being here. Of course, my pleasure. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I am by background in medicine, a medical oncologist, which uh, many people think of as mainly a treatment doctor, a, not a surgeon, not an endocrinologist, but a, a doctor who gives chemotherapy and other medicines in treating advanced and sometimes localized but high-risk cancers. Majority of my practice, about 80%, are uh, very advanced uh, thyroid cancers in particular. And so whereas many endocrinologists see patients from a diagnosis of thyroid cancer, I generally see them once they are progressing through the easy treatments, the surgery, the radioactive iodine, and when there is a more challenging clinical situation. So you may have answered this already or touched upon it, but do all thyroid cancer patients ultimately need to see a medical oncologist? Not at all. In fact, most would never need to see a medical okay. oncologist. So of the patients I see, I would say this constitutes certainly less than 5% of all patients with thyroid cancer because the vast majority do well without needing input beyond an endocrinologist, a surgeon, nuclear medicine doctor. Most do very well without any input from medical oncologists. Under what circumstances would a thyroid cancer patient need to come see a medical oncologist? Well, it very much depends on the type of thyroid cancer. So for instance, my viewpoint would be all patients with anaplastic thyroid cancer should see a medical oncologist because it's a more of a medical emergency. These are patients who do not benefit from radioactive iodine where the endocrinologist usually doesn't have as much to contribute. It's more of a medicine, chemotherapy, radiation, perhaps surgery um, disease. And this means that uh, medical oncologists need to be involved early on with all anaplastic patients. With uh, medullary thyroid cancer, it's more complex because many patients do not also need to see a medical oncologist, but some do. Those who have more advanced disease, especially if they do not have a very uh, experienced endocrine oncologist who's also involved in their care, because these patients need uh, medicines sometimes that are um, having not only potential for benefit but considerable toxicities. So there needs to be someone who is familiar with these medicines and how to manage the, uh, the potential um, side effects from these medicines. In the biggest chunk of all thyroid cancers, differentiated thyroid cancers, most will never need to see a medical oncologist. But there's a subset who should see a medical oncologist or endocrine oncologist. These would be the individuals who have more advanced and radioactive iodine resistant disease and in those patients who need to be considered for escalation to a more um, whole body medicine, we would say systemic therapy, those patients are often best seen by a medical oncologist. There is a um, little bit of nuance here that maybe I'll talk about. Okay. Um, in general, medical oncologists are used to seeing patients who with metastatic disease do poorly. So if they're not experienced with thyroid cancer, where sometimes restraint is important, medical oncologists have some risk of over-treating the patients because they may think the disease in some circumstances is worse than it perhaps is. Uh, this is mainly true in differentiated thyroid cancer, sometimes medullary. Endocrinologists, on the other hand, an average endocrinologist does not see many patients with metastatic thyroid cancer. And in that circumstance, uh, they can perhaps um, have an opportunity to risk overtreatment too because they're saying, oh my goodness, this patient has metastatic disease, this is really terrible. And so um, what the um, nuance is, is it's not just a medical oncologist, but as someone who has a particular interest in endocrine oncology. Uh, so it would be a, a sub-specialized medical oncologist or a endocrinologist with a particular interest. So, you know, it may not be always good to see a generalist in medical oncology. They have potential to not have enough background to do the best for patients with thyroid cancer. 
Um, so that's the little nuance. This is a, a pitch for uh, patients seeing experienced individuals, and this is important from surgery on down the line. Absolutely. So you may know that there are a lot of data that come from a variety of groups, including Julie Sosa's group at Duke, that would say that the more experienced a surgeon, the lower the complication rate, right. the better the outcomes. This is true with endocrinologists and medical oncologists dealing with thyroid cancer too. It's just the data are a little hard to put your finger on. Absolutely, that's a great point that when you need to see a medical oncologist, you want to see someone who has expertise or background in thyroid cancer. It's, it's true for any specialist right. uh, radiation oncologist too. Um, you want to have a familiarity with the disease and hopefully a high familiarity with any disease you're treating or else you run the risk of um, not really having enough background to do the best job for your patient. Can I ask about patients with thyroid cancer who aren't responsive to radioactive iodine, so they need to come see a medical oncologist? What are the treatment options available to them? So it depends on the extent of the disease and how fast it's growing. So for instance, uh, this runs the gamut. If a patient has, for instance, one lymph node that is enlarged and biopsy proven to be, say, papillary thyroid cancer, but no evidence of other disease, this often can be managed perfectly well by an endocrinologist with uh, an appropriate team and medical oncologist doesn't need to be involved. If the patient has widespread metastatic disease that's refractory to radioactive iodine, this is more of a situation where you need input from somebody who's experienced with these more global systemic therapies, kinase inhibitors being most dominant in that area presently. Um, doesn't have to be a medical oncologist necessarily. It could be an endocrine oncologist. So for instance, in our group in Mayo Rochester, um, we have two endocrinologists and two medical oncologists who share an endocrine oncology practice. In other locations, so for instance in uh, MD Anderson, mostly they're endocrinologists, but they're very experienced in this realm mm -hmm. and they do an excellent job so it's more the background that's critical than the subspecialty that's okay. critical. Okay, I have one last question for you. Is there anything else that someone should know who has been told that they need to be referred to a medical oncologist for treatment of their thyroid cancer? Um, so I think this point of um, if you have disease that merits a um, referral of this type, you want to make sure that you referred to someone who has a really robust background and experience in this area. And most medical oncologists, this would be foreign territory. And so uh, it may be that whereas a local endocrinologist can deal with 90% of all thyroid cancer, once it escalates to a medical oncologist, a local medical oncologist may not necessarily be the best referral and so this is a time when you may want to consider going to a center that has a greater experience in advanced thyroid cancer, either from the endocrinologist standpoint, endocrine oncology standpoint, or from the medical oncology standpoint. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Oh, it's Bible. a privilege. Thanks for uh, having me.